The number one way to overcome negative programming is to address childhood and epigenetic patterns. In this podcast, we're going to provide the how-to steps to remove the primary obstacles that are causing continual setbacks from achieving what you're ready for by showing you how to implement the seven-step panacea model. Yes, so first we want to address the resistance we may be encountering, which is usually the fear for sabotage. Once we remove the fear, we will often also remove the sabotage cycles to the fear. And as we address this, we will also be able to finally advance to new solutions or the goal because it is 80% psychology. And, the, and with that, we'll be starting to address the underlying cause, which is the belief encoded either in our childhood or in parent programming. And these inherent beliefs are also often responsible for developing our negativity bias. So if this is something that you may need a little bit more support with, then we're going to go ahead and go through some steps and strategies to help with that. Okay, let's go ahead and provide you with an example of some of these conditioned beliefs or inherited programming. So let's say that you came from a family or some uh, parents that held some really strong traditional values and beliefs when it came to marriage and divorce. So if someone were to find him or herself in a situation where they may need to examine their belief paradigms, likely adopted generation after generation, because they might feel condemned if they underwent a divorce or if it violated their own beliefs about divorce, yet they may actually be worse off if they stayed stuck in an unhealthy or even in an abusive marriage. So a lot of times when people find themselves in that predicament, they need to determine whether or not what's going to be the, the, the best situation for them. Right. And I can see that there's a lot of indoctrinated beliefs and traditions around there. So that's a really good example. So our first step in the panacea is a presenting problem, which is often the parent child pattern. So if we haven't reached the goal, then that's often when we'll see fear running the program. So we want to start by perceiving fear as a teacher that's revealing what the programming is. So what is a desired goal or outcome? Ask yourself maybe why you can't have it. That's generally where we will identify the conflicting or limiting belief that is causing the sabotage patterns. So we can go ahead and look at the fear as either a teacher, a friend, or even as a child, such as your own inner child, that's just needing compassion and understanding. So be present to the feeling and don't resist it. Um, don't avoid it because that's what leads to the negative outcome and the undesirable conditions such as poor coping and escaping behaviors that also lead to the sabotage patterns. Which can often last decades or even a lifetime until we acknowledge and accept the fear. When avoiding or confronting one emotion, which is the fear, it can cause a myriad of issues, which is an understatement because it's suppressed emotions from past events. It's just begging to be acknowledged. Yes. And so the types of uh, escape or coping mechanisms that you turn to are often determined by our epigenetics. And this is also where we turn to for external validation, such as whether it's codependency in, in relationships or status, career, substances and substance abuse, shopping, electronics, overworking or busyness due to being an overachiever and um, any other forms of false stimulus and escaping behaviors um, because of the ego's impulse for validation and not, not feeling like enough. Yeah, so if we continue to avoid our fear, it will cause us to continue to escape by a seeking external validation, which can begin to spur into narcissistic and other ego-driven behaviors and personality disorders from these coping identities. Yeah, so it can develop dissociative identity disorders and other pseudo-identities and personalities. It can also result in psychosomatic disorders and issues because suppressed emotions eventually lead to physical health conditions and illnesses. So we often seek acceptance and approval externally to validate our self-worth for us. So turning to these external factors is our ego's attempt to generate emotional security through approval, acknowledgement, or even recognition from others. Although it will actually never satisfy or um, meet our unmet emotional needs, and it can also leave us with a crippling dependency on others to fill our perceived voids of needing to feel loved. Avoiding this one fear will cause a colossal of additional problems. So ask yourself why it seems so scary to confront. Then go deeper. Where we feel judged by others is actually where we're judging ourselves. For instance, we might feel like a failure or that we haven't reached our potential. And as we continue to explore these deeper core emotions, we will eventually get to the root of the shame or the not good enough syndrome that's inherently wired in each of us. And this is where we will find that we've been hanging our self-worth. We're the only ones that are judging our self-worth and we're the only ones that can define our self-worth. No one else can define it for us. So we need to acknowledge our shame so that we can obliterate it 
and then that's what will help us to determine our real worth. Yes, and remember shame is usually at the very bottom, it's the root, it, root it's one of the deeper and mo lowest emotions. That so, are keeping us stuck until we can again visit it like, you know, just the emotion that it is, just a limiting belief. Yep. The next step of the panacea, step two, is the letter A, adaptive coping responses. And acceptance is a really important and a very good adaptive coping response. So first and foremost, acknowledge the fear. We obliterate it by acknowledging it. So what is the fear? Is it feeling like a failure? Is it feeling rejected or unlovable? And once you kind of get to the bottom of that, they usually do find the shame. And once we acknowledge it by vocalizing or writing it down, now it's time to do the most important step, which is feeling it. And this is the most monumental step that is often missed because far too many people fear getting this far or confronting it, which is why they usually avoid it or escape. And then they just don't know how to process these deep beliefs and emotions, especially without the help of a professional. So how we process this emotion or this fear and limiting belief is to allow ourselves to feel it raw just the way it is without resisting it or judging it. Yeah, it just needs our acceptance and this is how we can accept it versus reject it because self-rejection is also external rejection and then feeling judged by others. So once we can have self-love and acceptance for ourselves, then we can heal this because love and self-acceptance will heal all things. Okay, so number three of the panacea is the letter N, which is neutralizing the unhealed emotional triggers. So going through this acceptance process helps us to neutralize and neutralize the charge of the, the wound or the fear. We can also create a reframe to minimize the emotional scar by asking what we learned from this fear. And this also helps us to establish gain versus pain over the challenge. Therefore, now we're associating gain with the challenge instead of pain. So that it can help us to lift some of this weight. And once we do, it will reduce the power over us and then we can also make room for the solution. And then step four in the panacea is accountability yields empowerment. When we fail to course correct or even recognize our cart in a given circumstance, we're also acting from shame. Hurt and pride work side by side and we might feel guilt or fear of feeling wrong or not good enough, which will only perpetuate the problem or the pattern rather than reaching new empowering solutions. Accountability is empowering and is one of the highest forms of emotional maturity. Okay, so that leads us to step five of the panacea, which is the letter C, compassion and understanding. So start by removing blame. So if anyone is involved in this fear or limiting belief, or even if it's adopted or an inherited belief, rid yourself of any resentment, especially toward any parents. So watch for these projecting behaviors such as blame and anger outside of you and projecting that elsewhere and see that everyone is doing the best they can with what they have. Use empathy by relating and remembering that other people are drowning as well. Right, and that's an excellent point because when we feel like we're judging others, that's where we're also stepping into separation and division and empathy is Absolutely. going to be the unity consciousness. All right, so now the alignment work to align to our desired outcome. So let's start aligning it mentally and emotionally first. So some of those solutions are to realize that sometimes the emotion or limiting belief just needed to be acknowledged and accepted for what it is. But then we can also go to the desire and the positive feeling and state after we have neutralized it. And then with the physical solutions, we can take specific action steps. So let's cover the alignment work through questions. So what is a desire and why? For example, do you feel that maybe you've worked hard so you deserve it? Not from a state of entitlement, but from a state of worthiness by appreciating your diligent efforts, therefore expanding your capacity to receive more. Because oftentimes our challenges are related to us not knowing how to expand our ability to even receive more. So to list three tangible action steps to achieve the goal. How can you make it fun? Add excitement to achieve better results and it won't feel like a chore. Therefore, you'll feel more inclined to take action. This is also where we'll align to a little bit more of the positive and connect to more joyful feelings. And then envision the ideal outcome. Essentially describe the best case scenario and make specific success markers, such as a date, an income amount, and the number of weight loss in pounds. What do we plan to do once we reach the goal, such as home improvement projects, or even a very much needed vacation, offering gifts or services, or helping out loved ones in need. Okay, so number six of the panacea is the letter E, which is evaluate growth and gain gratitude. To continue to increase our self-worth, it helps to regularly make a list of your strengths and talents and what you have learned from this challenge. 
So most importantly, what you have overcome to develop new faith and reinforce the positive belief primarily in ourself, including the wins to increase gratitude and which helps us to actually release natural neurochemicals such as those positive endorphins um, without needing to turn to external sources because the answers are all manufactured within, right? This helps to lead us to expressing and embodying gratitude because after we've evaluated that growth and we see all of the gains. So how can we be grateful for this situation? And what have we gained? What can we appreciate about how things are now presently? We can then begin to express gratitude for seeing our desires being met and fulfilled. So make sure that you understand the importance of that step. And this is the step that's going to really help us to overcome that negativity bias. Yes, most certainly. And each of these steps also help us achieve the alchemical transformation because we become the expert in the challenges that we learn to overcome by unlocking new solutions, opportunities, and then therefore aligning to our higher purpose and dormant potential. So now just envision new potentials that you're ready for. And if you need any more support overcoming the negative programming and the negativity bias that is oftentimes difficult pattern to overcome because they are inherent and a result of epigenetics, we have done for you courses and programs that are internationally accredited to help overcome childhood programming on a genetic level in as little as six weeks. Our programs are available to individuals, couples, families, and even certifiable for professionals. We also have books, ebooks, audiobooks, podcasts, and annual subscriptions currently offered at a VIP rates. So to learn more, visit us at liberativeliving.com and follow us on social media distribution channels. We hope this was very helpful. Thank you for joining us.